Okay, the moment has arrived. Time to learn some React. So I'm not sure how far we'll get in this series of videos. Uh, it'll likely be like one of these TV series, like Pushing Daisies, that gets canceled in the middle of it. And it's a great show, and you just say, well, wait, what happened? What's the ending? Um, so we won't... <laughs> I don't know exactly where we'll end. But what I hope to give you is just a foundation. A foundation to work from. Some of these things that were really complicated to me in the beginning of learning this stuff, I hope to get past those so that you can move on and learn. Uh, I'd heard before I ever did anything with React that there was a very steep learning curve. And I thought, yeah, yeah, but I'm a big fancy professor. Like, I'll be able to do it. And it really is a steep learning curve. Now, I hope to take some of that steepness out of it in, in the way that I explain things as I wish somebody would have taught me when I was learning it. But there is, it's a different thing. And um, it's just going to take a little bit for us to wrap our minds around. And so let's start just by what is React? And, and this is the part that I think is helpful for me as I was trying to learn it, like learning, kind of thinking about how it, it came about was helpful for me. And so as we go out and just look up, let's look up the most popular programming languages and just kind of grab the first legit link here. And so I'm going to go in here to this one and we'll see here that the most popular programming language is JavaScript. Now I want you to pay attention too that TypeScript's up here in this particular uh, website, right? And if we go and look and I say, let's go look at GitHub. I like GitHub because it, it actually is looking at uh, which languages have uploaded the most code, if that makes sense. And so if I go look at this link and I come down here and look at the most popular programming language out there is JavaScript. And it's true. It's just used in, in pretty much any web app. We're going to have some JavaScript in there and then Python, and then Java, and then notice again, TypeScript. And then notice it's showing us over time what's happened with this language. And look what's happened with TypeScript over time. And then of course there's C Sharp and some other languages. But, but as we think about this, the most popular language is being JavaScript. So if I go, what I'm gonna do is just kind of walk through this history. So we start out with this language called JavaScript, which was built out of Java, a very popular, stable, long time, classic, programming language that is one of the most widely used languages today. So that's Java. And at some point, this little offshoot of Java for scripting purposes was, was built this language, JavaScript. And it was meant for scripting. So that it was not meant to write a website in necessarily. It was meant to go set up a hundred accounts or uh, you know go check this website 15 times a day and do something. Uh, it, it, those are scripting languages are not meant to be uh, widely used. But what happened with Java, JavaScript is there's this evolution because people really liked it. It's a great language. And so they started using it to write uh, bigger, more robust apps. And it became a primary programming language, even though that's not what it was intended for in the first place. And then other languages came in, uh, jQuery, to try and help because JavaScript, you had to do so much and we're doing these same things every time. We want this uh, you know, toggle button. Well, that's kind of a pain to write in JavaScript. And so libraries like jQuery came out to say, hey, just say toggle and we'll, we'll behind the scenes, we've got all this JavaScript code that will make the button, but all you need to say on your end is toggle. And if you ever worked in JavaScript, it's kind of a pain in the rear end to uh, debug because everything runs at the client side. And so you write what you think is good code and then there's this error. And then to try and find out what the error is, it's not like other languages where we can step through easily and, and look at the, the code. And so we, we have some tools to help us out with that, but it's kind of a pain. And so in 2010, we had a developer uh, at Microsoft that built a language called TypeScript. Now TypeScript sits on top of JavaScript. And what it does is it, it changes the JavaScript language 
into a more formal language. And so it sits on top of JavaScript, but it notifies you if there's an error as you write the code instead of waiting until it's running at runtime. It allows you to build the program and see errors. It adds in object-oriented or programming. It turns JavaScript, if we go look at it, so TypeScript, It's a strongly typed programming language that builds on JavaScript, giving you better tooling at any scale. And so it gives you errors as you go along, as you're defining things. And so TypeScript, uh, again, as we look at the, the most popular programming languages has become, as JavaScript has become a very popular language, TypeScript has become more and more popular. And we'll use it as we develop our website instead of writing out kind of true JavaScript. And so TypeScript has been helpful. Well, you might have heard this little company called Facebook. Facebook was started by Mark Zuckerberg in 2004. And in 2012, so eight years later, it went public and raised $16 billion. And so Facebook has been a force in the tech industry for a while. And in 2010, as these software engineers were frustrated trying to build the things that they wanted to do, uh, for Facebook and trying to use JavaScript to do it, they developed this language React as a solution. So React in uh, 2012 or 2010 uh, was built and uh, then it was open source or so released to the public in 2013. And since then, that was React version one, we now have you know many, many versions uh, past that. I don't even know which version we're on now, 18, 19. Um, lots of different versions to try and solve problems that arose as people began to use this and as it became very popular. Now, why is React so popular? It's just really fast. And so one of the most famous websites that's built in React, and I have it up here, is Netflix. And so as we go look at Netflix and we kind of just walk through this website and see what we see, um, this is all happening via React is making this work. And as we click on a movie, as we play the movie, as we go do whatever, then uh, this is all happening in React. And if we pull up our uh, developer tools, and uh, this is one of the, the coolest things, if we go into, uh, let's see, look at the elements of the website and kind of break this open, you know, see these different divs that are in here. Um, as I move around and do things on this site, you watch what's happening in terms of what's highlighting here. That's when changes are being made. Um, this is one of the coolest elements of React is that the elements that get changed on the site are only the elements. So this is a page that's loaded out there. It's been downloaded to my screen. And then the only thing that's changing as I'm uh, m hovering, moving around, Fletch, great movie, right? As I like this, then the only thing that changes was that little div for that particular movie or, or whatever. And so this is one of the huge benefits is that we don't have to, in .NET, we have to reload from the server over and over and over again, which is okay. Now .NET does have the built-in blazer that will run what we call single page applications. So this is a single page application. We've downloaded the page. And even when we navigate from here to here to here, you know, as we go to the different sites, the page structure is loaded. It's just getting what it needs in the moment it needs it. So it's downloading the information it needs to, to populate these little uh, cards, these little forms that are here so that we can hover over the last airbender and have it play a little preview for us. And so, but it does that asynchronously. We even watch it happen when I click on movies. It's, it's fine to wait and have that data come down asynchronously when it gets the chance. But what that means is for other things that we're doing where it's already loaded up, it runs really fast. And so anyway, React is really cool, but uh, I'll just continue in the next video talking about some of the other tools that have been developed since then to make it easier for us as developers to write the code in React. Spencer out.